So you find a um, a man uh, sort of along the side of the street. He's sitting out in front of a uh, doorway. And as you approach, he says, Oh, hello, hello. Come in, come in, come in to Hork and Friends Jewelry Shop. <laughs> yes. You look like you need something a little fancier than what you're currently wearing, I think. His name Are we buying a pod racer here? <laughs> what the fuck's going on? He's a little blue yeah. guy. He's got wings. Yeah. <laughs> His eyes me. light up. He says, ah, yes. Hork and friend welcomes another customer. <laughs> Ex- excuse me, shopkeep. I am yes. uh, I'm looking for a focusing crystal for my las torch. I think perhaps you might be able to help me with that uh, nice little omelet you have in your hand right there. Uh, he looks to the side and he, he, he tosses the amulet over his shoulder. He says, <laughs> ah, no, friend, this omelet is not worth it. Those who serve the Omnisaya, come with me. And he puts his arm around you, taking great care to be careful of your mechadendrite. Uh, oh. And he starts steering you into the back of the shop. I, I, I sort of put my mechadendrite around him, thinking that I have finally, for the first time in my life, made a real friend. <laughs> <and continue> to... <laughs> I will take your crystal, and here is your 30 throne gelt. Ah, he uh, he hands it over to you and, and palms your, your gelt, sticks it into a back pocket. And he says, ah, welcome, friend. Come back any time. You need more crystals. Hork and friend has more crystals. <laughs> uh, you head back to, to Hork and friend's place. He's sitting out uh, in front. He sees the four of you approaching. He says, ah, my friends, back for more jewels. What can I do for you? Good sir, tech priest, was it not enough? Oh, ho, you maybe need uh, <laughs> something else. Some decoration for your little mechadendrite. I, kinda, mm. I push I do like away. the idea of uh, putting a couple of shiny things on my mechadendrite. That sounds like a good idea. Engelbar, we're not, we're not looking, we're just looking for directions. We're not looking to buy anything. Our good friend glares at you, he says, he, he puts his arm around Engelbar and he says, Do not listen to him, my friend. It seems like he maybe does not want you to have a beautiful mechadendrite. So come with me. Our good friend will show yeah, you how I, I to Yeah, sh- I shoot a harsh look at Eli. And it's like, clearly this man does not want me to be happy with my life. I, I, I trust my friend. He is my friend. So I trust clearly, him. Clearly, clearly. Now come come with me. What What is it you are seeking for? My friend, he sort of pulls you back into the back room and he, he gets real close to you. He says, my friend, I think maybe you're not just looking for jewels. <laughs> Indeed. You are very perceptive, Mr. Hawken friend. Uh, purveyor of fine omnisire and artifacts, sir. Uh, we would be happy to compensate you for your time. Hork and friend does like compensation. This is an interesting <laughs> perspective you offer, my friend. But listen. Nico, have, it's your uh... cousin. Why don't you take me boldly? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. oh, the uh, the accents are the best part, you guys. <laughs> no, it is. It's good. I hear you are interested in things of the warp. Isn't that not so? <laughs> This is true. The war. Now, come with me. In my secret chamber, I have a few minor texts that deal with this subject. I have personally sworn off ever looking upon them again. But uh, I can perhaps be agreed to let you take a glance. (laughs) At this point, I burst into the room and say, As I suspected. (laughs) Okay, you uh, pretend to be an ally of the Mechanicus and the Omnisire when really you besmirch the artifacts and the gifts of the great machine god with this heretical warp nonsense. Bart. I I bring a, I bring out my mechadendrite and ignite my plasma torch and wave it menacingly in front of him. Now, one of two things will happen. The option is yours. Option yeah. 0. I will incinerate you and this entire so-called establishment for tech heresy. Or option one, you will give us the information we need, as well as a few of these rather useful focusing crystals for my own personal collection. 
and we will forget that any of this ever happened. A Horkin friend reaches under his cloak, and he pulls out uh, a wicked-looking bulbous pistol. And he says, uh, Horkin friend has been waiting for this day, but he has not been unprepared. I would like to look around the room and see what's here. Down in the back corner over near you, there is a, um, like a little stove with a pot of beans bubbling on it. Um, can I loot the beans? <laughs> you can take two steps over to the beans. <laughs> really? Looting the beans is a half action? <laughs> <laughs> Moving to the beans is a half action. God. Bricks, what are we I doing? Move towards the beans. <laughs> um. Okay, Kappa, you're right next to the beans. <laughs> ah, you guys a strong shopkeep, man. <laughs> Can I assess how hot these beans might be? Because honestly, um, they've been overboiling for quite some time. They're gonna be pretty hot, right? The beans do look like they are. Uh, they're certainly beyond the boiling point of water. I will toss them into the face of the shopkeeper. <laughs> oh yes. Okay. Uh, you realize you're doing that at a minus twenty for sh for shooting into melee combat, right? Yes, but doesn't it count as one point blank and two an area of effect weapon? Okay, uh, you're not point blank because you're not within three meters of him. Um, I would let you grab the beans as you step three meters, get that point blank advantage. There you go, point uh, blank, point blank beans, good. And then, point like, blank. it's probably it's probably a blast one, so it's a one meter radius blast. These beans count as a melter weapon, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, these beans could totally melt through a tank. No. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. All, All right. right. Roll that. Ah. Oh, my God. Okay. Beats, beats everywhere. <laughs> roll, roll 1d8. Beats. Got the, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, they, like, clatter against the back wall and uh, splatter all over. And that's, that's all that happens. That's really Frick. disappointing, I gotta say. Engelbart yeah, looks sadly around the room, takes one look at his fallen former friend, looks towards the wall, sees the remains of his meal, and states, <laughs> It's very unfortunate that we could not get him to spill the beans. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, you look up and there's like uh, sort of a hatch port with like a big uh, circular hatch. You, you wrench at it and it, it, it seems actually kind of stuck. Mm. Yeah, um, are, there, there? Are, there, are, are there any locks or is it just flat out stuck? You know, now that you're up here and you can take a closer look at this hatch, you see on, on the very side of it, there's sort of a, a thin strip of metal with a couple of uh, raised areas. These are obviously buttons that you're looking at. Yeah, okay. Well, hitting random buttons without the proper sacred ungrants and rights doesn't seem like a particularly good idea. I don't know if you guys have got three hours to kill, but I'm thinking perhaps the best idea would be that we just blow it open. So I'm only like, yeah, so you, you should see me pulling the frag grenade So I guess out. as you pull the frag grenade, I'm just like, whoa, 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 what are you doing up there, Kappa? <laughs> it would appear that we need to bypass this. So you're going to blow this up? Isn't that going to be an issue here? If, if, would that not cause problems? I don't, prob well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to be able to get through after this detonates? Well, we're certainly not going to be getting through any other way. I don't know what these buttons do, and it's against the machine god's will to push random buttons without the proper three-hour ritual preparation. So, so you can't push them, but I can. It would be <laughs> against all of the machine god's will to play with those buttons. You, quite frankly, do not have the technical expertise nor the necessary knowledge to push these buttons, and the ritual is required. But, well, of and course, and if Gordon. I happen to not be... I like the image of this stupid tech priest held up in the air. He's just like, <laughs> he's like, if we have the time, <laughs> there is possibilities to remove the great. All I'm Engelbart. saying is that observing the proper rituals wouldn't be possible without a tech priest present. Don't don't you have tech use, Engelbart? Oh yes, that <laughs> I do. <laughs> So you can figure this out? Is that what that means? Not without the proper sacred unguents, and I don't have any. Okay. Mm. I refuse to press the buttons. I can't do it. 
He's a I don't know what man. it'll do. It's disrespectful to the buttons machine spirit. I can't do it. All right, Jax. Why don't you? Uh, why don't we send our uh, our friend Kappa here to uh, just go do something, Kappa? <laughs> Le- leave us alone for a couple minutes. As an acolyte of the Omni Sire, I figure I can probably work it out. How much time is that going to take? Anyway, no. Well, in order to apply the sacred unguents... Oh, I'm God, not pro- this shit again. What were you going to say, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Ingelbart, you got to stay here with me. You got to go do your own thing. Uh, I guess I can follow you around. Something interesting might happen. Fall- I mean, I'm going to stand right there and I kind of point to the wall. <laughs> So I got I've shuffled but up to the wall. But it's next to a light a switch T B, so you notice the light yeah, switch. Yeah. I'm like, but but Ingelbart, this, look at this, and it's just a little light switch. I release a sure. puff of sacred incense and stare <laughs> lovingly at the switch. <laughs> oh my god. Eli's just sitting there rubbing his hands together. He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> so you guys make it back down to where Engelbart is staring blankly at the wall. You've discovered Engelbart through the night that um, the light switch actually controls one of the glow globes inside of that that's lighting the cell. <laughs> there's, a, there's a large bulbous globe that hangs from the ceiling that appears to suspend uh, some molten metal in a magnetic field and as you tweak and fiddle with the knob you can cause the metal to rise or lower or brighten or dim. It's all very fascinating. Mm. I will begin the ritual of the lighting. This will take approximately three hours. I will apply the sacred unguent. Mm. He started that a while ago. This is the next day. Yeah, it's a long you... ritual. I know. What three can hours. I say? Took you have to appease the machine spirit. <laughs> Do you know what happens when a machine spirit gets angry? Do you have any idea? You know, instead Not of really. turning the light on, it might burn off your hand, or it may Ooh. pretend to turn the light on. Then a couple of hours later, the glow globe melts, and you're underneath it, and suddenly it burns your face off. That can happen. You have got to be careful. What? <laughs> I I I turn around, and I mean. What? <laughs> Engelbart? I, I, I kind of lean over to Jax and be like, Jax, I, I think we should, I think you should tell him what's going on here. I lean in and I'm like, I can't tell what's happening. Right I can't now. either. That's why I was asking you. <laughs> I am very confused. I've never. Should we just kill him? Like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> awesome. So, last, but certainly not least, our lovely, attractive female. Is she attractive? Uh, Psycho, right? Jeff always Probably. does Moderately this. Every, attractive, every right? episode of Roleplay was like, is that girl attractive? And then Neil has to roll the charisma score. <laughs> <laughs> to find out if it's attractive or not. Well, she is 700 pounds. And <laughs> <laughs> it depends, depends on what you like. Yeah. Attractive, I guess. When are we going to stop to eat? <laughs> exactly like you said. <laughs> guys, guys. What's up? Check, check your Twitter real quick, because someone in the, from the beginning of the show to now redrew DJ Weed's character only fat. <laughs> Wait, only <laughs> fat. <laughs> oh, With the no. fucking donut at the end of it. That's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this too. The guy that did it is uh. It's pretty good. Hang on, <sighs> hang on. Oh my god, can you can you link it to me? I don't see it on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the worst. Oh, wow, that's extra heretical. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'm left out. There I'm you so go. Sad. I got you. I got you. It's also on the stream right now, so people can see it. But that's it pretty good. Mouth too small for dope. Remember how I said oh, that my sustain God. was like my hardest thing? Well, you know, I practiced. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Practice sustaining that dietary intake. <laughs> you push open the door, and let's find out what's happening with uh, with Engelbart and um, Fricks. I like that dramatic so you guys, turn. Yeah, that was you guys good. have. Meanwhile, inside the wardrobe, Fix is like, does this thing we look better than you do? <laughs> Doing important work for the Imperial Inquisition, Frix is putting on men's clothing. Meanwhile, I am going to kill Jax one day. Engelbart is weeping as he reads lost love letters. 
<laughs> as as TB's yelling, I'm just sort of taking some concern. I'm wondering is as we approach the door, if we have any cover before we go into the room, or if we'll have to enter the room. And immediately, uh, I'd sort of what I'm assessing of the information. Can I be brutally honest? When you said when we were approaching the door, I was worried. I thought you were going to say if you could fit through. It. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Jax. There's no time to joke about my weight. You know that I'm sensitive about it. It's taken me a half turn just to yell at your sorry ass. What? Oh, Did you have I, something to say? No, I just, I've just been watching. I peop, I'm people watching at the thing. I just, you know, I, I'm sure that I'm sure that Eli Please, was going to okay. work out. It's okay. I'll so. ask. Does anyone dance with Frick? Does anyone at all? <laughs> Mmm, let's see. Frix, would you give me a fellowship roll? Oh, a I'm, rather I'm flaccid, kind of overweight, balding man approaches Frix and says, Do you like Taco Bell? <laughs> Frix, you... 85. Oh, Ooh, yes. Oh, a, oh. A, a rather flaccid, overweight, balding man approaches <laughs> Frix and says, Do you like rat tacos? As he a says, matter of fact, I do. He says, I... I like rat tacos. Do you, do you want to dance? Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right. Uh, give me an agility roll, Frick. This is over oh, by the right. buffet, oh, of course, right? Well. That's where this is occurring? Yeah, it's over by the buffet. Okay. 57. I wish to read any scrolls you have about the warp. My lady, why do you want to know such terrible things? I, I, I don't know that I can even I can even tell you. I just I seek knowledge about the warp. I seek better understanding. I do not know that I can condone the interest of a normal citizen in the warp, my lady. I am afraid I must decline to acquiesce. Do you think that if I was a normal citizen, I would be asking you about information and documents pertaining to the warp? Who, where are you from? What is your, what, what is your quest? <laughs> I think the Grail. You're a good old yeah, man. I'm, yeah, I'm, currently, grail. I'm currently uh, in, involved in an investigation, but ongoing, my quest is simply to serve the, the Emperor. And in doing so, I have myself succumbed to the warp several times. Both by choice and not by Don't choice. Tell him that. <laughs> He's a member of the Ecclesiarchy. What like, are you doing? He <laughs> pales and he like immediately starts running back upstairs. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, based he, off of Kappa's uh, reaction, maybe we just need to get in the damn elevator and go. He runs past you and runs upstairs. What are y'all doing? Are all of you downstairs in his little... I think my mouth drops open. <laughs> in his little rat hole? I just turned to Jax. I'm like, Jax, I mean, you want me to be more hard, right? <laughs> I'm not oh sure this God. applies, little darling. I, I think... Uh, <laughs> you hear uh, this... What, what's to come might make you harder. We'll see. You hear this raspy <laughs> voice from upstairs. <laughs> the warp of the heaven. <laughs> and Go, then uh, elevator. You, you hear like three women, um, uh, you know, murmuring in low tones. Um, and then you hear the sound of power armored boots ringing on the stairs. Oh, um, and uh, Arl Thalia, like, he sort of puts his arm around you, uh, Fricks, and he says, There, there. I know you didn't mean anything. Now come along. Let's let's get you some nice tacos when we get up to the surface. <laughs> mm, sure. You, you <laughs> close the door and and begin cranking the little hand crank inside of the elevator. The whole thing begins rising. You see the three sisters uh, turn the last bend, and um, I lean and down. There's a reasonable explanation. Call me. <laughs> 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 His name is, let's see, it's Cortez. Let's find a last name for him. Oh, yeah, Barboza. Barboza. Okay. He walks up and Lupus introduces him to the rest of you as Cortez Barboza. So it's basically exactly the same, um, can I give the same kind of stuff. Out? Please. Sorry? <laughs> can I give a quick shout out? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <Yes. laughs> 
Lynx Life uh, in the chat says, you best start believing in heretical stories, boys. You're in one, says Barbosa. <laughs> <laughs> the worst joke ever, but pretty funny. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> That's a line. I'll give him that. Yeah. Oh, uh, all right, thank you. Sorry, continue. All right, so Phaedrus just did that. Barboza steps up to Eli, and he says, "You'd best start believing in heretical <laughs> stories, Sonny. <laughs> You're in one." And he takes aim Darn. over your shoulder at the slag rat, and he fires off a shot. Oh, God. Start fighting like you know how, because you're in a fight. <laughs> you best start acting like you're in a fight. Because you're in one. <laughs> Frick's it's that your dialogue. damn turn. Okay. Barbosa so, says that, I'm like, shut up! I <laughs> got you not the script writer for Eternal Crusade, because holy <laughs> shit. We, we, we oh hire people to do that, yeah. You're the most yeah. annoying... <laughs> NPC Character ever just ever. keeps fucking turning around and going, You best start shooting better. <laughs> you fucking die. That needs to be an NPC in the game. You've got to do it now. I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah. You investigated Captain Cortez Barboza's high rise. And, uh, you'd best believe you can get in if you work hard enough, son. <laughs> Um, I remember we broke down laughing about that for about 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. still funny. It's still funny. It, it was a big feature of the game last time. Yeah. Uh, Engelbart, Engelbart looked at... Believe... <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking remember how... It... What is it? You best start believing in heretical stories. Uh, You're, right. in You're in one. <laughs> You're in one. <laughs> Accompanied by Captain Cortez Barboza and Arl Thalia. Rat hunting trips. Yeah, right. <laughs> God damn. Yes. There's a lot of mileage in this joke. I just say how this has like become the joke of the show. Yet. Yep. We have not beaten that to death yet. <sighs> uh, he clutches his chest. He says, Ah, Eli, you better watch where you're shooting that thing. And now. It juts out a gout of flame in um, Cortez Barboza's direction. Oh my god. <laughs> you just Eli's start like, believing in Inferno's boy. Damn. You know <laughs> now this... He's having the worst day of his life. He says this... that to <laughs> So, Jax, I'll tell you what. You get me out of here alive, and I'll give you this power sword at the end of the trip. And then I say to him, you best believe you're getting out of here alive. <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, now why? Barboza, Cortez Barboza actually says, he, he looks around and he says, Ah, I know where we are. There's an elevator back up to the hive and we can reach safety if we get to it. Follow me. Um, <laughs> you'd best believe I know how to I get know. us to safety. Because <laughs> I do. Helmsman, set a course. You start yeah, hustling. a tiny Eli boat just comes down the river. Guy, and he's somehow in every mission we ever have. Um, he's now hanging on by the tips of his fingertips. I go, I go over immediately as to grab him. Yeah. To the party to appear like I'm grabbing him, but I'm actually yeah. just like fucking trying to like pry his fingers off the ledge and like okay. make him fall. <laughs> awesome. Uh, he looks up at you with a pleading look in his, in his eyes and he says, Eli. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know best you believe I need you. some help. Because <laughs> I best need believe it. in rifts. I'm in he, one. He's reaching up to you with one hand and his. Cortez Barboza, you best believe he's dead and never coming back because it's true. 